All right. Hey, everyone. Thank you for joining our second Dragonfly Community Office Hours. Um, today, joining us, we have Roman, who is the founder and CTO of Dragonfly, also creator of the Dragonfly um, project. We have Joe, who's the developer advocate here from Dragonfly, myself, Nick, the VP of marketing here at Dragonfly. And we also have a guest joining us today, Manuel, who is the creator of BullMQ, as well as the um, founder and CEO of, is it Task Force, as well as? I'll yeah, let Manuel task tell. Taskforce.sh uh, uh, is the, the actual name of the company. Great. Fa uh, founder and CEO of Task Force, who maintains BullMQ as well as offers a, a hosted um, kind of enterprise version of BullMQ. Um, and that's going to be kind of the, the focus of today's office hours. Um, we can actually hop over to the, Joe, if you don't mind hopping over to the agenda. Today, we'll be talking a bit about um, Dragonfly and BullMQ and the, the new integration that we are announcing. Talk a little bit about what it means, um, how it can be used, and, and taking questions from, from any community members um, that are curious to learn more. Um, so yeah, let's let's start with with just a brief introduction. Roman, if you don't mind, tell us a bit uh, about Dragonfly, what it is for for folks who aren't familiar. Yeah, sure. So for those that uh, don't know, uh, Dragonfly is a, a drop-in replacement for uh, Redis and Memcached, and the goal of Dragonfly is uh, to eliminate any of the software bottlenecks uh, that exist today between uh, Redis developers and the hardware, meaning uh, Dragonfly, uh, Dragonfly design uh, is an intended to unlock the 100% uh, of performance of the underlying hardware. Uh, Dragonfly uh, is designed for high throughput and low latency applications. And uh, our recent uh, benchmarks uh, show that it can reach uh, 4 million QPS on a single instance uh, even higher, much higher uh, on newest generation instances on uh, AWS, for example. And we run uh, load uh, workloads of uh, one terabyte or higher uh, on a single Dragonfly instance. Uh, we strive to be 100% uh, compatible with a Redis API. Uh, uh, on, and that all those properties uh, eventually contribute to uh, a significant cost savings for uh, those teams that uh, utilize Dragonfly in production. Great, awesome, thanks, Roman and uh, Manuel. Can you give give the audience a, a brief introduction to BullMQ as well? Sure, sure, I can do that. Uh, well, so BullMQ is just an open source library that implements a queue system. That initially it was implemented in Node.js, but uh, now you can also find a library for Python that has almost the same uh, functionality as the Node.js version. And um, well, uh, the backend that uh, is used by BullMQ is uh, Redis, as you may suspect. Uh, and uh, we implement a quite feature-rich uh, list of features, uh, the kind of uh, features that you find on, on many uh, uh, queue systems. Like uh, when, when we say jobs, by the way, here, it, it, we also mean messages because uh, jobs and messages are kind of interchangeable in this uh, context. Uh, so, so we we support uh, normal jobs, prioritized or delayed. We also have uh, the possibility of repeating jobs according to a cron uh, schedule. Uh, something also quite important in many queue situations it's uh, the possibility of uh, making rate limiting, so that you don't uh, sometimes you actually need to slow down the queue because it, it goes too fast. And then we have uh, some other quite more advanced features like uh, parent-child uh, relationships that uh, allows you to create uh, complex uh, flows uh, where you have uh, jobs or messages to, that depend uh, on each other. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Manuel. And what we what we uh, we we announced, you know, earlier this week the the new integration with Bull and Q and Dragonfly which allows you to run run your Bull and Q instance with a Dragonfly backend rather than a Redis backend. And this is something that we we collaborated with Manuel and his team on um, and worked on it for the last month or so. Roman, could you 
tell us a little bit about uh, this new integration from the Dragonfly side, kind of what it is and, and how it was implemented? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, definitely. So uh, Dragonfly, uh, uh, well, when we started Dragonfly, we actually had no idea uh, about the complexity around uh, uh, job management uh, and uh, how, um, how hard it will be to actually uh, uh, parallelize uh, workloads uh, that exist around uh, job management frameworks. And um, at some point we understood the importance of this functionality in, in Redis uh, community. And in Q3, we decided that it's uh, for us strategically important to uh, solve uh, uh, this problem. And we chose BullMQ as a vibrant and uh, uh, interesting uh, framework, uh, very popular framework. And we, we decided that we want to support it fully. Uh, and uh, basically, we needed to, to take a step back and to understand how we can uh, integrate uh, Dragonfly and its uh, parallel uh, compute capabilities with uh, something like uh, BullingQ that employs Lua scripting underneath. Uh, and uh, what we did, we uh, provide um, this uh, parallel support for multiple queues. So basically, uh, Dragonfly uh, underneath um, uh, handles uh, each queue in, in its uh, dedicated shard or shard thread, but uh, it can transparently uh, uh, distribute the workload across multiple shards, and this why it, uh, this is how it can utilize all its CPUs. Uh, so the the key moment here of how a BullingQ user can utilize Dragonfly uh, efficiently is to use uh, multiple queues if possible, and to use uh, multiple connections if possible. And uh, and, and then uh, this way, uh, Dragonfly will be utilized, utilized full. Uh, now, there are uh, uh, some options that uh, need to be provided to uh, Dragonfly. We still uh, debate uh, between ourselves uh, whether we uh, should uh, switch those uh, options as uh, like their defaults to be the way that uh, they are defined uh, for BullMQ. But anyway, right now, uh, what we need to do is just uh, follow uh, the documentation on our site and you'll be able to configure a Dragonfly to run optimally uh, for a BullMQ framework. And uh, yeah, and that basically will provide you the optimal performance and utilize all the uh, underlying hardware when running BullMQ workloads. Great. Thanks for thanks for walking us through that, Roman. And Manuel, question for you. What for, for Bull and Q users who may be accustomed to running their, their workloads with a Redis backend, can you tell us a little bit about what some of the advantages they might see from, from running on Dragonfly, uh, what those might look like? Yes. Uh, well, obviously the the performance is going to be the, the main advantage that uh, a Bell Bull and Q user is going to to notice because uh, uh, I mean uh, when you are running millions of uh, of jobs uh, per day and uh, sometimes it, it comes in bursts uh, you you really need to to achieve the maximum performance to avoid uh, Redis uh, to be the bottleneck of uh, of the system we we have seen um, some cases where, where this actually happens. Uh, and uh, Redis can actually become a little bit unresponsive when it get, goes up uh, over 80% of, uh, of the CPU. Uh, and since uh, Redis is single threaded, uh, it's quite difficult to actually um, scale up in, in those situations. So I think uh, the ability to actually uh, divide the workload in, in different threads is going to be a, a very nice uh, advantage uh, to solve th these kind of problems. Uh, and it's actually not so difficult to achieve because even if you are using only one queue today, but uh, that's actually a rare case because normally people use uh, uh, many queues. They, they have queues for many different tasks and so on. But let's say that you have one queue that's uh, quite, um, in, in, it, it, it requires more uh, jobs per second than the others for some reason. You can just uh, divide that queue in in, uh, in different queues. Uh, and uh, for ex I mean, you can just name the queue like a Q1, 2, 3, 4, for example, so explaining it easily. 
and then you just uh, divide the jobs in those three queues instead of using one and suddenly you can use now four threads for for running uh, all these jobs in parallel in redis instead of uh, only one uh yeah and i think uh, what, what i like uh, about this uh, approach is also that uh, it's uh, actually pretty simple to to set up because the alternative if you are in the redis uh, standard redis ecosystem would be to to use a cluster and uh, yeah ha having uh, several nodes instead of only one it, it, uh, makes the, the whole setup uh, much complicated and, and uh, and probably you're gonna get other bottlenecks uh, due to TCP uh, uh, latencies and so on. So yeah, and in the case of Dragonfly, you just uh, enable the the multi-thread setup. You can choose how many threads you want to to run, and uh, if you name your queues uh, appropriately, you're you're gonna take advantage of this uh, of this uh, nice extra performance. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, and I I would like to add. Uh, uh, also something regarding uh, Redis cluster uh, setup and to show why vertical uh, scale of Dragonfly uh, could be much more efficient uh, than a horizontal scale uh, in, in that specific uh, case. So we did the internal uh, test uh, internally and uh, let's say you have eight queues and you run a eight shard Redis cluster, okay? So what you would expect that uh, uh, on average, every every queue would recite a different shard, um, and then you would uh, actually load a Redis cluster in a uniform uh, way, and that doesn't happen. And the reason why it doesn't happen uh, is a mathematical phenomena that is called the uh, birthday paradox. Uh, those that uh, uh, learn the computer science probably uh, know this or mathematics. They probably know this uh, phenomena. And this will happen all the time. So uh, if you have uh, a relatively uh, low number of queues, thousands of queues, uh, uh, this uh, this phenomena will happen, and your shards, Redis shards, will be uh, loaded uh, in very non-uniform uh, way. Uh, and uh, what Dragonfly can do inside its within its uh, single process when it handles multiple queues it, it, it can do uh, load balancing and spread the load uniformly and uh, in a transparent uh, way unfortunately the benchmarks that you see right now they actually do not uh, represent this performance advantage compared to redis this is a, a feature or a, a, an optimization performance optimization that we are currently working and uh, it's a development uh, it's going to be uh, finished by the end by the next uh, version release uh, and uh, but basically uh, and I'm sure people that use uh, job management frameworks in, pro in production they familiar with this phenomena they know about hotkeys they know about uh, hot queues um, uh, they all uh, saw this phenomena that there is uh, several shards that are super hot on and in a parallel, in the same time, there are other shards that just rest and do nothing. So Dragonfly can transparently balance its workload and utilize all its cores. Uh, and the reason why it can do it transparently because it can actually move workloads from uh, one thread to another. And it's, you know, it's, a, it's the same nodes, same machine, same process. So it, it can be done much easier. Uh, so yeah. Great. I'd, I'd love to. Th thanks for walking us through all the the performance kind of differences there. And and these are these are some of the benchmark data that we ran showing different amounts of queues running on Bolum queue with with um, different kind of configurations here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about about cost as well, right? This is a big a big deal, especially recently. I think for for anyone, any architect, any DevOps engineer, any CTO who's running large production workloads. Um, I know that you know due to the the scaling pattern of Dragonfly can often run in a more efficient way and it can save folks money on their infrastructure costs. Roman, can you can you tell us a little bit about about how this works and how people can how Bolin users can actually reduce the amount of money they're spending on infrastructure by by running on Dragonfly rather than Redis? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I mean, short answer is a more performance system, uh, less 
hardware, uh, hardware front, uh, footprint is smaller. Uh, obviously, you, you pay less for, the, for this hardware. You also uh, 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 pay less for management. So uh, the total cost of ownership uh, goes down significantly. But if we talk about uh, even like, let's put aside uh, very you know, synthetic benchmarks. Uh, from my experience, uh, really, even though uh, like officially it is advocated to uh, run Redis cluster, that each shard is a single CPU, uh, like eight gigabytes of RAM, and such. Uh, what happens in the practice that it doesn't really work well for various reasons, uh, especially in the cloud where smaller instances are much noisier and the variance of your performance changes uh, with time. So people uh, just for different uh, uh, reasons, they actually, even if, even if they employ Redis cluster, they use four CPU instances, eight CPU instances with uh, 32 gigabytes, 16 gigabytes, et cetera. And, and then uh, you, you obviously have this missed opportunity uh, where just one CPU is actually working and uh, uh, applies all those you know, uh, changes to the data structures of, your, of the in-memory store, and all, all others are just resting. So uh, what Dragonfly does, uh, uh, it uh, embraces the reality, okay? People want to run a smaller uh, or fewer instances with significant uh, uh, you know, workload on each of them, and this, uh, what Dragonfly does, it doesn't uh, uh, it do doesn't deny the, the 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 experience of uh, uh, data architects. It, it, it doesn't push back. It embraces uh, the the right approach, uh, so people can just uh, run significantly bigger workloads on each uh, Dragonfly instance and use less hardware, and it's much simpler. Uh, so. Um, I, I I usually tend to think uh, uh, of Dragonfly like a, you know a very efficient car or like an engine car engine, and uh, we talked about uh, spiky traffic for example. Um, even if you uh, do not need one hundred percent performance from each uh, shard, uh, you you can run Dragonfly say each each instance at sixty percent performance etc. And its power, its its uh, uh, you know uh, potential maximum throughput will allow you to uh, sustain a sudden spike spikes without uh, uh, you to kind of uh, plan in advance uh, various events, various you know uh, unexpected uh, 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 surges of uh, traffic. So you can have much stable, much more reliable infrastructure and it will just work under even you know most rainy uh, conditions great and and i wanted to mama i want to ask you about some of the common use cases for for bull and users today and we actually have a question from one of the attendees which is is, is for you manuel you can kind of answer this as well is in which of these use cases do you see redis often being the bottleneck uh, with bull and workloads so if you could just give us a few examples of use cases and then when in which use cases, you know, or instances in which you've seen Redis be the, the bottleneck there. Yes. Uh, well, actually, Roger, who is not here today, told me about uh, one case uh, that he is experiencing with a customer right now. And uh, it is uh, when they get a very large uh, burst of, of jobs that come uh, because they, they have thousands of, uh, of clients uh, and uh, when they need to update several registers at the same time, it can become pretty huge. And when this happens, uh, Redis uh, becomes the bottleneck actually, because uh, the the jobs themselves are so lightweight that uh, the, the the only thing that's taking CPU is actually uh, sending the jobs to Redis and then back to the workers. And when this happens, you can see Redis uh, CPU uh, rise about eighty percent, and, and uh, then it can actually happen that. You can lose connections, or uh, or jobs are actually not uh, they, they fail when you try to to add them to the queue. Uh, now this is an extreme scenario, but uh, it, it happens uh, sometimes, and the solution 
will be to uh, you don't have any other choice if you're using Redis than actually buying a more expensive uh, hardware to to cope for these uh, bursts. Uh, and I think that uh, if you instead uh, can utilize the, the rest of the cores that normally are idling on, on the on the on the server running Redis, then you probably will not have this problem, or at least you will uh, need to have much more traffic in order to to, to get to the same situation. Uh, so I think that answers the question. Yeah, yeah there's a few other example example use case, not necessarily where Redis is the bottleneck, just general examples of how. Yeah, what 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 developers are using Bull and Q for today? Yeah, I know a, a couple of them uh, that are quite popular. For example, um, within marketing automation, uh, we are seeing many people using uh, Bull MQ for uh, handling all the the messages and jobs that you need to to handle in a marketing situation, where you need to send emails, SMS, uh, gather information from. Uh, from users that are visiting a site, uh, things like that. And for, for big companies, uh, this uh, create a huge amount of, of, uh, of messages and jobs that, that need to be processed. Um, then other cases that I am seeing uh, recently are uh, webhook uh, handling. That's also a case which usually requires a lot of um, processing. Uh, with webhook handling, I mean, uh, when you have uh, you are interacting with other external services that uh, communicate back uh, using webhooks. And uh, a very good way to, to handle the webhook is uh, when you get the web webhook, you just put uh, the job uh, inside a queue and then later you take uh, care of uh, whatever you need to do with that webhook. And uh, for big uh, clients, yeah, it, it can become really, you can get a huge amount of, uh, of messages to process. Uh, and also another case that's quite popular is uh, simple uh, microservice communication. Um, because it's not only about processing jobs, it's also about uh, sending information between services. And if you have a, a complex uh, microservice architecture, uh, then uh, using queues for communicating between different uh, services is a super good way to do it because uh, it, it gets so much more reliable. Uh, one service can go down, but it doesn't matter because the, the messages are, are waiting for the service to go up and and these kind of things. Um, and if, if you have a, a, a big and complex microservice architecture, of course, you, you're going to need to send many thousands of, uh, of messages per second. So, so you're going to need uh, some pretty good uh, Redis uh, backend uh, to power up that. Yeah. Those are great. Thanks for for walking us through those models. And I want to I want to kind of zoom in on you were mentioning the marketing automation use case, right? This is one I'm familiar with as well. Let's take like a, a more specific example. Let's say you know there's a popular gaming company, and once a week they send out uh, an email to every gamer on their platform saying, "Hey, here's here was your best score this week. Here's the various levels you beat. Here's the high scores for everyone." You know they're they're pulling in a bunch of date, player data and then giving a customized email to every player with some interesting information, right? I think this is a common kind of marketing automation use case. If you have hundreds of thousands or, or millions of users, that's a, a lot of emails to process, a lot of data to process. Tell us a little bit from your experience, like scaling that type of workload on BullMQ using Redis versus using Dragonfly, like walk us through a little bit of how you think, what the primary differences would be for, for a, a, an architect who's scaling those using each of these, these different backends. Well, I think uh, in this case, if you want to, I mean, if we're thinking about the mail sending case, you normally will think that you will use just use one queue for this and uh, just put as many uh, jobs on that queue as you possibly can when you want to to send all these millions of mails or whatever. Uh, but if you're gonna take advantage of a uh, dragonfly, then you will have to change this a little bit, and uh, instead of using only one queue. Maybe you're gonna spread it in sixty queues or something like that, uh, because by doing that you are gonna be able to to run much more uh, jobs in, in parallel in the different uh, CPU cores that uh, that your Dragonfly server has. Uh, so it's gonna be a small change, but uh, it's gonna increase uh, the delivery uh, rate uh, immensely. Uh, I, I think that's your question, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I, and I think I think just one other point to, to call out there is that if you 
you know, if you need to scale, for example, millions of, of users of data and, and millions of messages sent, you're likely going to need a cluster set up with Redis. You're going to need to manage a distributed system in order to be able to deliver those in a timely fashion and ensure kind of reliability of, of the system. Whereas with, with Dragonfly, you likely can just run it on a single large instance and really cut, probably cut down on your infrastructure costs, but certainly cut down on the complexity of the infrastructure you need to manage. Yeah, there's a funny case, uh, you know, in ABS, you have an elastic cache and it's actually used by, by many BullMQ users because it's uh, pretty simple to, to set up and, and it's actually quite reliable. But when you start with a simple elastic cache instance, uh, you can choose and you get uh, one, one CPU core. But as you need more performance and you want to increase the, the, the CPU of, of your Redis uh, instance, you notice that even though you can uh, buy a very expensive uh, server with many cores. Doesn't really matter because you're still gonna use only one uh, of the cores. And since this elastic cache, you cannot do anything with the rest of the cores at all. It's like you're paying for for seven cores, but on, uh, uh, that, that they are not doing anything at all. So that's a uh, quite frustra frustrating scenario for users that are uh, trapped in, in AVS. Yeah. Yes, we're very familiar with this frustration. I think this is one of the core frustrations that, that led Roman to create um, Dragonfly. Yeah, definitely. Um, great. I think, uh, Joe, you do have some final kind of thoughts or, or notes you wanted to share? Oh, yes, for sure. First off, thank you so much, um, Roman, Manuel, and Nick, and all the community members. It's uh, exciting to see so you guys here. Uh, yeah, I, I prepared something where, you know, particularly in this slide, um, this benchmark we have is running with uh, 64 queues. Uh, and it is on, and as you can see, we are reaching like 2.4 times ish throughput, right? But I, I need to mention that it doesn't show in the slide that um, these benchmarks are like run on an AWS C7i to X large instance, which is a moderate kind of uh, instance has uh, having eight vCPUs and 16 gigs of memory. So 16 gigs is not really that large. Um, normally, depending on your uh, use cases and workload, maybe it's fine uh, using such an instance for Dragonfly or maybe for BoomQ, but this is definitely not the limit, right? Um, there are like a lot more, much larger instances out there uh, within the cloud providers. Um, yeah, if you if you want to explore, um, please do um, evaluate and run the benchmark yourself as well. Uh, and in the meantime, as Roman mentioned just earlier, that the optimization um, doesn't stop here, right? Um, I think it's a, it's a great uh, opportunity that we see two communities working together um, uh, in order to you know embrace each other and to improve together. Um, um, I want to also mention that uh, when we design, like Dragonfly by design, it's uh, wire protocol and commands compatible with Redis. But why are we talking about compatibility of BoomQ here, right? That's all because the internal uh, architecture uh, and internal designs that, that we made. And uh, um, yeah, that's why we also spend a lot of effort, you know, both communities uh, work together in order to to make this happen. It's a great, great example, um, yeah, of how open source projects and communities work with each other, and really appreciate all the helps from the communities as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's a, that's a good note that you know if you want to try, if, if you're not familiar with BullMQ or Dragonfly, both are available on GitHub for free. You can you can run them on your own, and both uh, offer you know hosted services if you don't want to manage your own infrastructure. So you can go to Dragonfly db.io slash cloud if you want to get more information on, on the Dragonfly hosted service. You go to bullmq.io if you want to get more information on, on the bullmq enterprise service. Um, and yeah, that's that, that's it for today. We will be sharing the recording out with, with everyone who registered, wasn't able to make it today. Um, and yeah, thanks for joining our Dragonfly community office hours. Roman, Joe, Manuel, thank you all for joining as well. Thank you.